Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to give an introduction into computer hardware. Let's get into the computers themselves, how computers work a little bit, what are the parts of the computer, um, what, what makes the computer actually function. Um, so that's what we're talking about today is computer hardware. So computers, um, you've probably all seen a desktop computer. So there's a desktop computer here. And in this, uh, this picture, we have a, uh, a CPU or a tower uh, type system. And this uh, computer also has a monitor and a keyboard, a keyboard and mouse. Okay. So whenever you think about computers or you, you think about digital devices, uh, you can always think about them in terms of um, inputs and outputs. So in this computer, we have kind of the, the processor, the central processing unit. Um, what are the inputs into this processing unit? Well, the inputs would be something like the keyboard and the mouse. What are the outputs? What, what do we get out of the computer? Well, we get interaction with the display. So whatever is showing on the display is outputted output by the computer. Okay. Um, now we can also have things like printers, which would output. We can have network connections, which would be both a uh, an input and an output. If we're trying to communicate with the internet, uh, we both have to, you know, uh, uh, send data out and also receive data from the network. Okay. So whenever you think about computers, you can think about almost everything in terms of inputs or outputs. Is it an input? Is it an output? Um, in this case, from the human, one of the easiest ways for a human to get data into the computer is by a keyboard and mouse. And there's actually a lot of really interesting research on why the keyboard was selected and why the mouse was finally selected. Um, why do you think that we use mice uh, whenever we're you know, trying to do some sort of precision work? Why don't we use a joystick or why don't we um, use a glove that uh, fits over our hand, something like that? Well, so far the mouse has been uh, one of the most precise, most accurate, and cheapest ways and relatively intuitive ways for humans to interact with the computer screen. Um, keyboard as well. If you want to enter information in, now the keyboard um, is basically coming almost exactly from the uh, uh, typewriter. But the interesting thing about the keyboard, like think about why do we put the keys where they are on the keyboard? And there's a lot of history to why the keys are in the certain place um, that we put them. Most people's keyboards keyboards are in what we call a QWERTY configuration, QWERTY configuration. Um, if you look at the top uh, left-hand side of your keyboard, you'll probably see Q-W-E-R-T-Y, and we call that a QWERTY keyboard. Now, the reason that uh, we use a QWERTY keyboard kind of as the standard keyboard is because we copied them over from typewriters. Well, why did typewriters use that uh, configuration for typewriters? Well, it turns out that they actually had a different configuration uh, for typewriters initially, but people were typing so fast with a typewriter that the typewriter would get jammed. So they actually gave the QWERTY keyboard um, to on typewriters, so that way pe people would have to slow down when they're typing and the, the typewriter wouldn't get jammed. So. Uh, basically, we've just kind of inherited this this system that might not actually be as efficient as possible, but it is relatively easy to use. It is uh, known by most people. And now that people are comfortable with a certain keyboard layout, they don't want to change very easily. So um, there's a lot of history behind the keyboard and mouse. I'm not really going to talk more about these, but these are inputs into the computer. Um, something like a display or a monitor would be an output. Now, another input into the system, two more inputs on here would be this button. This is a power input. It controls whether power is input or not, and it controls whether the computer turns on or not. And then there's also this CD or DVD player. And um, it could be both an input or an output. If it's a DVD player, then the DVD is giving data to the computer, so it's an input. If you're writing a CD or writing a DVD, then you're uh, outputting data from the computer. 
Okay, so here um, we basically have the uh, computer, which is this tower here. This is the actual computer. The monitor, which is this TV looking screen. The keyboard, which is the keyboard, and then the mouse, which is this little round thing over here. Um, all of those uh, are uh, basically one of the, the cheapest and most efficient ways that we can interact with different computer systems. <laughs> now, uh, this is the back of the computer. So if you look at the, the picture on the left, to the back of this computer, um, from the top, this top part here, this whole section, um, you might be able to guess what it is from this plug. This is the power source. This is where all of the computer gets its power from. Um, and we'll talk about the inside in a second. But the power source takes power from the wall um, and powers the rest of the computer. Uh, from the top, um, there's this kind of, uh, let's say, holes in the back of the computer. And that is for ventilation. It's not a fan. Um, th there is a fan inside the um, power source, but here there's not a fan in the back. This is just for air to come in. Um, the computer gets really, really hot, obviously, um, and if you put it in an enclosed case and new air can't get in, then the computer can overheat and maybe even catch on fire if it gets hot enough. Um, that's, well, yeah, okay, so that's one thing. Um, so you have to have a flow of air. So these cases are designed to keep the computer cool, okay? Uh, next, from the left-hand side, we can see this gray cable with a purple adapter. Um, this is a uh, keyboard cable, and then the uh, green is a mouse cable. And this is a, an older standard. Most of them now will be USB, but sometimes you see older keyboards with this uh, purple, purple round plug. This is called a PS2 plug. And the same for a mouse. These are the older standards. Um, next, it looks like this is a um, uh, a serial output. This is kind of for something probably like a joystick or some, um, yeah, basically just different types of external adapters like keyboards or joysticks. Um, this long pink uh, adapter or connector is for uh, parallel printers. Um, you don't really see them too much anymore. Most things have gone to USB, but this one still has a printer uh, basically used almost only for printers and some other types of adapters, but mostly for printers. Um, so we have keyboard, mouse, uh, basically joystick, printers, and then there's this, uh, probably looks like it's a sound port. I can't really tell from this picture. And then there's a couple adapters that look similar to USB, but they're a little bit round. And on this, this is probably actually Firewire. Firewire. Uh, Firewire, now you don't see them really too much anymore, but um, they're an older standard, a very fast connection um, uh, that gives you direct memory access. They're usually used for things like cameras, like video cameras, and transferring large amounts of video really quick. Um, there's two, uh, two plugs plugged in here, and these are just standard USB ports, uh, so USB. And then next, there's this um, uh, kind of square uh, square connector, and that's for a network cable. That's where you would plug uh, a cable in that goes into your Wi-Fi router um, or yeah, just an internet cable, basically. Um, we'll talk more about what that internet cable is probably next week, um, but an internet cable or network cable can be plugged into there. Um, and then you have all of this uh, kind of pink, green, and blue connectors. These are for um, audio out. So basically microphone, speakers, and um, auxiliary. So if you have, um, let's say, a, I don't know, some sort of adapter for your guitar, you can plug um, your guitar into this auxiliary port and record your guitar. Um, yeah, so a couple different connector connectors for sound. So this means that there's a sound um, card built into the computer and a uh, network card built into the computer. And yeah, all of this plate right here is built into the motherboard of the computer, okay? Then at the bottom, so we have uh, power source, built-in connectors, um, vent, and then down here, we have this kind of blue adapter. This is a VGA connector um, for your monitor. And then this white adapter is a, um, a DMI adapter 
for um, also for a monitor, but this is a high definition, high resolution uh, connector for monitors. So VGA is a little bit lower, um, lower quality connection. Uh, DVI is higher quality. You don't really see DVI too much anymore. Um, uh, we've gone to a different standard I'll talk about in a second. So this is this card in here is an external graphics card, external graphics card. Okay. Um, and then it looks like a vent uh, down here. And then there's another sound card. So maybe the, the sound card that's built into the computer isn't very good quality. Um, so they added another sound card. Maybe it's higher quality. Um, uh, the sound card does actually make, or at least it used to make quite a bit of a difference in the quality of the sound that would come out of it. Um, yeah, so sound cards, uh, you don't really see them externally too much anymore. And then there's another network cable or a network uh, adapter in here. So maybe this network adapter is actually slower than the extra network adapter that they put inside. So this has two network adapters, two sound cards, one built in, one external. Um, and then uh, as far as I can see, I don't see a VGA connector. So it looks like um, one external uh, uh, graphics card or uh, uh, yeah graphics card okay so um yeah this is the back of the computer this is also the back of a newer computer and this board over here is actually the motherboard that fits inside of this case so if we took the case off of the computer it would look something kind of like this so i'm going to show a little bit closer up uh, the back of the computer so here we have the built-in sound card um, again, uh, for speakers, audio input, things like that. And then we have a uh, unified PS2 connector. So because it's purple and green, it will accept either a keyboard or a mouse. And then it has two USB ports for presumably, you know, a keyboard or a mouse. Um, and then we have a uh, network adapter. So a network adapter. Um, this is probably either eSATA or maybe a strange colored USB port. I'm guessing it's eSATA, which would be like for an external hard drive. So a connector for an external hard drive. And then this looks like it's probably a new type of USB. Um, and then these are two video connectors, newer, newer type of video connectors, um, not VGA, not DVI, um, uh, HDMI. So this is an HDMI, um, Actually, I think it's two different standards of HDMI, but this is at least an HDMI uh, adapter. So probably for dual monitors. So from this one computer, you can plug in two monitors to it. Um, these are, I believe, also, they could be for wireless, but I'm pretty sure they're for um, uh, uh, networking. Actually, they might be for wireless now that I look at it. So this could be for a Wi-Fi connection. Um, and if you have three, it could be to try to do some duplexing or just get a better signal. Um, I'm not really sure about this board. Then there's two more uh, USB connectors, and actually these are USB. So this red one over here is probably USB as well. I'm not sure why they're colored red, probably just to look cool, but the blue ones are normally um, USB 3.0, which is the newest standard. So this is also the back of a newer um, newer high-end motherboard. Okay, so this is a motherboard. This is a computer inside its case. The metal part is the case. So let's see a little bit closer what a motherboard looks like. Okay, so if we were looking inside the case, this is the computer case. This is basically what most computers look like. There's this green board, and this is what we call the motherboard. You can see the pink, um, probably uh, printer printer adapter or printer connector right here. Um, and that would be sticking out of the back of the computer. This is the, the front is on the left, the back, um, what we just saw is on the right hand side. Um, and then we can see a couple things. Uh, um, so where do we start? Okay, up here first, there's this orange cable. There's this orange cable. And this looks like it's a SATA cable, SATA cable. Um, and it is going to a CD-ROM. So this is the back of a CD-ROM, and then you would put the CD in the front of the computer up here. This is a CD-ROM, and this is a SATA connection um, uh, into the keyboard. Um, this other cable, there's two cables. One's orange, and one has a white cable on it. This white cable and the cables close to it are power. So this big box right here is the power 
source for the entire computer. Now, the power source is coming out of the bottom, or coming out of the bottom of the power source are cables, and all of this is power going into the motherboard. And the motherboard is like the main brain of the entire computer. It basically controls everything. So this needs a lot of power from the power source. And then out of the back of the power source, you have power going to like CD-ROMs. I think this is probably a floppy disk. Um, and then hard drives are down here. You can see the power cables running down. So there's two hard drives in here. Um, and all of that needs power. So all of that power is coming from the power source. So there's a lot of cables coming out. Um, let's see. Uh, right, so we have the CD-ROM here. Uh, it's connected by SATA and it's receiving power. Then we have the floppy disk, which you probably won't see anymore in any computers. And um, it has power coming in this this yellow cable right here. And then there's a ribbon cable, which is kind of an older standard um, that is coming down and into the motherboard and connecting directly to the motherboard. So uh, yeah, floppy drives, this one's using a ribbon cable. We used to use ribbon cables for everything, um, for every external thing, like a CD-ROM would have a ribbon cable, um, hard drives would have a ribbon cable, but now we've gone to a much faster standard that's SATA, this blue cable and this orange cable. Okay, so next, let's see. Um, we have basically a lot of this is for ventilation. You see these holes right here that lets air come into the computer case and circulate around and then go out. Um, if you go all the way down, there's two hard drives here um, the hard drives are not part of the motherboard, but they are connected to the motherboard by this blue wire. This blue wire is also a SATA cable, SATA cable. So there's two hard drives inside this computer. Um, so two hard drives, floppy disk, CD-ROM, power, um, power source, and then this big green thing is the motherboard. Now let's look at the motherboard a little bit closer. So on the motherboard, uh, we have this big uh, silver thing right here. And this silver thing is called a heat sink. Heat sink. Basically, it takes heat away from whatever is underneath. So underneath this uh, silver thing is a chip. And that chip is the most important chip in the computer called the processor or the central processing unit. Okay, so there's the central processing unit underneath the silver thing, and it gets really hot, so we put a heat sink on it, and that heat sink helps to keep the processor cool whenever it's doing a lot of work. The processor looks very similar to this black chip right here, uh, but a, a little bit different. Okay, so there's another, there's a lot of different chips on this, um, on this motherboard. Uh, the processor looks similar to this black chip, but again, a little bit different. Um, the next thing that I see here, there's a little chip that's long and flat right here, and it is called random access memory. So this is one stick or one dim of random access memory. We'll talk about random access memory in a second. This is power, like we said. This is a SATA connector for the CD-ROM or DVD. Uh, these are all of the ports that are sticking out at the back of the computer. Um, then there are PCIe connections. So you, I don't know if you can see it really well, but there's actually a card sticking into this white connector. So there's an external card sticking in or expansion. And we call it an expansion card. So this expansion card sits or fits into this white slot. And then we can add additional chips and additional functionality to our computer by putting more cards into the computer. Um, now, a lot of computers today have cards built in, but we can expand or we can change out cards and change out functionality depending on what we need the computer to do. So this looks like it's probably some sort of maybe a modem or a network cable. And these uh, slots are called PCI slots, PCI. Okay, so there's this external expansion card and the... Um, the expansion card is also sticking out of the back and that's where we would plug in network cables. It fits into the slot in the motherboard and then it expands what the motherboard is capable of. Okay. 
So next, this is the motherboard a little bit more up close, a slightly different type of motherboard. Um, so let's look at what are the what are the biggest features. So this these connectors up here would be actually sticking out of the back of the computer. Okay, so this connector would stick out of the back of the computer. This slot is for the the central processing unit. This is where we would put the central processing unit in. This is only a uh, motherboard, no extra adapters or anything like that. So this is where the processor would go. Um, this is probably, I'm not sure exactly, but maybe built-in video. Um, yeah, I'm guessing it's built-in video because it looks like there's a heat sink here, which means it gets very hot. It does have its own video adapter, it looks like, which means that it must have some sort of GPU built into um, the, the motherboard. Uh, power would fit in this white, white slot down here. Um, this battery is to called the CMOS battery, and it's to keep settings in your computer. So whenever you set up your computer, um, not Windows or anything, but even before Windows, if you set the time on your computer, this battery helps to save that time even if you unplug your computer. So the battery basically keeps very, very basic configurations um, even if you unplug, unplug your computer. Um, this stick right here, so this orange slot, the um, horizontal slot, is for random access memory. It would f The RAM stick would fit down in there, so there's two slots for random access memory. The other orange slot, the vertical one, is for PCIe, so there's an extra card that would sit in here. Um, now that card could be anything. It could be for uh, video, it could be for audio, it could be... Um, it, maybe it controls external hard drives, maybe it connects to a power plant uh, control system. It could do all sorts of things. So you can fit any card you want in there as long as it's a PCIe Generation 2 card. Okay, now there's PCIe 1. These are kind of, um, they're just smaller ones. It's a different standard, but these also um, are just expansion cards that would fit in there as well. Um, and then this is also, I believe, a uh, full-size PCI. So this is a new type of PCI, probably faster, um, faster, newer. These other ones are a little bit slower. They support an older standard, but they would still work as well. Um, up here is probably the circuit that controls audio. I'm not really sure what all this is going to do. And then serial ATA. So all of these connectors would be the um, SATA connectors that would control like external hard drives, CD-ROMs, things like that. Okay, so there would be a cable coming out of here. All right, so that's pretty much a motherboard. Um, the main main parts that you need to be aware of are the connectors on the back, um, where the central processing unit would sit, and then w how we put in RAM. As long as you have a hard drive, RAM, a CPU, and power, then that's all you need to run a computer. Well, and the motherboard, of course.